All right, hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. In this module, we're going to be looking at the Chiclet Slicer. Now, the Chiclet Slicer is very similar to the Native Slicer that's already built into Power BI, but it does have a few differences. The Native Slicer inside Power BI strictly shows the data in a table format that you can apply filters to. So you'll notice that whenever you look at the traditional slicer inside Power BI, it always shows from uh, a vertical top-down approach where you can click on the values that you want to filter. Now, what's different about a chiclet slicer is you have a lot of flexibility with how the items that are to be filtered can be arranged, where you can arrange them both vertically or horizontally, which you see in the screenshots on the right. And in addition to that, you can also choose whether or not you would actually like to see the filters as an image. So if you have images of your data, uh, you can use that, or you can just use traditional text. I'm showing you an example of both of those in the screenshot on the right-hand side. The top being just the text values that you can filter on, and it gives you a nice little button that you can select for those text values. Or below that, if you have images of your data, you can actually filter on the image. So you select the image and it filters everything else on your report based on that filter selection. Now the images do need to be placed into a URL. So that's the only way to access them through Power BI is if you have a connection to the internet and connect to where those images are located, then they can be placed on the filter for your Power BI report. Now this visual is developed by Microsoft. Let's go ahead and take a look at where you need to go to download it and how you can use it. All right, now our first step is to go ahead and go to the Visuals Power BI Gallery. If you go to visuals.powerbi.com, that'll take you to the Custom Visuals Gallery. And as you go down and search through all of the visuals that are available to you, we are looking for the one here called Chiclet Slicer, which you'll notice here on the right-hand side of my screen at this moment. Uh, you can go ahead and select that, click that you want to download it, and save that into a spot that you can find later. You can also download some samples of how to use it as well. All right, once you have it downloaded, and make sure you save it somewhere you can find, you can go back over to Power BI, and then inside of Power BI, we'll walk through an example here of how you can use it. Now, in our sample today, we're going to be looking at social media users and seeing which of the social media networks has the most active users monthly. And I think I've thrown in a, thrown in a couple other websites that I wouldn't necessarily consider social media, but it's interesting to look at here as far as the data structure. We're also going to have some images to this data, so we'll have images of the logos for each of the social media networks that we have in this data set. And then we'll build out a bar chart to go along with it. And in addition to that, the Chiclet Slicer and show all the variety of different custom visual properties you have to this one. All right, so let's start by going ahead to get the data. To get our data here, we're going to go up to the Get Data section. And this is going to be an Excel file, as you have seen with most of our data sources. We'll select Excel. And you can find this Excel source below in the link of the video here. And I'm going to go to the custom visuals data sets that I have. And we're going to be using this one here called social media network, social media users. Excuse me. Here we go. So we'll select social media users and then click open. And once we select open, we're going to go ahead and bring in the monthly active users of all these different networks that I have selected here. So you can see here's the uh, different social media networks. Here's the parent company that owns them. You can see Yahoo owns a couple of these here. Uh, and we'll go ahead and hit load to bring this into our data model. Okay. And we have four columns that we're working with here. We have the total number of active users. Again, this is monthly data. We have the image URL for the social media network logo. We have the name of the social media. And then we have what parent organization owns them. Let's start first uh, as we create this and build first a little bar chart that has in the parent organization and also the total number of active users. So I'm going to create a bar chart first, put in the parent company and the active users. And I'll slide this over here so make this a little larger for us to see. And you can see Facebook by far has the most users active monthly. Google right behind it. Uh, Google has a couple networks in there. You might not realize also Microsoft has a social media network. Remember, they bought LinkedIn now, so they have LinkedIn as one of their organization items. All right, so then we've got this bar chart. Looks good. We can see the parent organizations. But what I'd like to be able to do is see as a filter with the image the actual social media networks on the left-hand side. So I'm going to click somewhere in the background of the left-hand side. And we're going to go import the Chiclet Slicer, which I showed you how to download just a few moments ago. So I'll select to import right here from a file. Yes, you are OK. You can go ahead and import this. This one is actually developed by Microsoft anyways. This uh, gives you a little security warning there, though. And we're going to go find the custom visuals that we've downloaded, including here the Chiclet Slicer, which is the one that we're focused in on today. So I'll select that and hit Open. It has successfully imported that custom visual. You'll now see it in the Visualizations pane appear here on the right. And you can go ahead and select that, and we'll make it take up a little bit more real estate here. All right, now first thing we're going to do is go ahead and bring in, inside this Chiclet Slicer, the name of the social media network. So we'll bring in the name column, and you can see that it does bring in each of the names here as a filter. And you can go ahead and select it now and use this to filter down the other items you have on the right-hand side, okay, like so. Or you can uncheck that or select it again to unfilter. 
You can also multi-select by holding down control. You can multi-select multiple values that you want to filter here as well. Okay, so you do have some options here as far as how you can do the filtering. Now you also can bring in some additional things in here. You'll notice that there's an option inside the chiclet slicer to bring in a value. This is kind of unusual. You wouldn't think to bring in values into a filter, but there's some reasoning for this that you'll see in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and bring it in and show you why it's important in a few moments. So I'm going to bring in active users as part of my value section, and I'll bring in the image URL here as well, and you should see in a moment all the images come in from my URL that I have supplied. Now one thing that's interesting here is that cross-filtering does apply. I can filter here, like so. I can also filter by selecting something like Yahoo or Google, and you'll notice that it filters down just the items that refer reference Yahoo or Google here. So cross-referencing works both ways. You can filter either way depending on how you've selected things. The reason why it's important that you bring in that measure into the chiclet slicer is cross-filtering does not work unless there's a measure here. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I select the chiclet slicer again, remove the values, you'll notice that not only does it remove the image URLs, but it also doesn't do cross-filtering anymore. You notice as I select things on the uh, bar chart here, it's not filtering anything inside the chiclet slicer. So it is important that you have some kind of measure, whether it's just a count of values or whatever it may be, that, that is basically holding the reference between the two and allows you to do that cross-filtering that we saw earlier. All right, that looks good now. So we've got that reference in there. We can see the images in here correctly. Now let's play around with some of the paintbrush settings or the format paintbrush settings that we have for the chiclet slicer. So I'll select the slicer. I'll go over to my format paintbrush over here on the right-hand side. Go work my way down to images on the very bottom. We'll work our way bottom up. So I'll go down to images here, and you can see the properties that you have for images. You have first here the image uh, split, which is basically how much, what the percentage of space that image is taking up on the little outline that we have here on the space of the button that we have. So right now it's set to 50%. You can, of course, increase that to 75% if you want. Uh, you can notice that how much it increases the size that it's used here. If you bump it up all the way to 100%, it'll actually remove the text and just show the image. And then you can kind of adjust this, have the size of this. So if you want to make sure the resolution is not uh, messed up too much, you can adjust the size there. I'm going to leave it at 50%. Just wanted to show you the option there that you have. You can also use options here to stretch the image. So if I hit uh, this and turn on the stretch image option, you'll notice that it stretches the image to try and fit into the entirety of the screen. And then you'll also see you have an option here called uh, bottom image, which allows you to flip where the image is located. Do you have the text first or the image first? So if I flip on bottom image, you'll notice that it flips the location of both the uh, image and the text that you have there to look at. I'm going to flip that back. Don't really have anything I want to change inside that particular property. So you can hit revert to default, and that'll send it right back to how it was before we got started with that. Next, under the chiclets section here, if you go right above to the chiclets properties, you'll notice there's some things you can do with adjusting. There's actually quite a few properties here. You can adjust the text size if you want. So you can see here I'm increasing the text size. You can change the height and the width of the actual buttons here if you'd like. You can add a background color to the overall box that you have and have a transparency if you'd like. You can also do things like change the selected color. So what does that mean? That basically means when you select something, what is the color of the background that it appears? You can adjust that here. It has a light blue right now. If you want to make it something like yellow, you can do that. Uh, you can also change the hover color. So right now the hover color is black. What that means is when you hover above, what text color do you see? So right now it's black, but you could make it something more obvious. Maybe I wanted to make it something like a bright blue. Now whenever I hover above it, it is actually a blue color here. There you go. You can see that a little better now. Uh, you have some other options in here as well. If you wanted to change, you know, what does it look like when it's unselected? Right now it's white when it's unselected. If I wanted to make it something like that blue when it's unselected, you can see that. You can also do other things with colors here, like how does it look when something's disabled? Let me actually revert back to the defaults here and then show you what this one looks like. You'll see there's an option here called Disable Color. That's what it looks like whenever it's not selected. So let me show you here. If I select a yellow here, and let's say, for example, I unfilter this and I just select Microsoft, you'll see all the ones that are not available, that aren't selected, that aren't Microsoft networks are now showing up as that yellow that I just looked at a moment ago. That's what it means when it says disabled color. It's a color that is, does not have any reference here in this particular data set selection. You can also change the outline color. So that's just the box around it. If you want to change the color of the box, you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and revert this back to the default colors that we saw a moment ago. And I will actually increase the outline around the boxes that we have here. So you can see I'm going to bump that up to about, uh, let's say, four. How about that? Or five. So I'll bump that up to five. That actually changes the, the selections, how it looks as far as the buttons that we have here. It looks a little bit more of a bold look to the color. 
You can also do some things like this if you wanted to. You can even change the way that the outline of the box looks. Right now it's set to cut, which is really the nature of the corners that we have here. But you can change this to be more square-like if you want, meaning that it has very hard edges. Or you can do like a rounded edge like this, where it looks more like a uh, more modern button look and feel to it. You can also change the text color, the color that you see here right now. That's not the hover color, that's the text color. That's how it appears here uh, just when it's sitting still. All right, so that's the chiclet section. There's a lot of settings there that you have, especially when it comes to the colors that things appear, how they appear when they're at rest, or how things appear when you're actually interacting with them. All right, one thing I would probably do in here, uh, depending on your filter type, I think this filter type is fairly obvious what it is. So you'll notice there's this header section up here at the top, kind of defining what it is you're seeing here on the bottom. I don't really need that header section, so I could turn that off. And again, these filters are pretty obvious what they're doing just by nature of what they show uh, that they're social media networks. So you can turn off the filter here. That's a property setting here. If I turn on the filter, you do have some options here as far as naming the header if you'd like. Uh, you can also increase the text size. You can have an outline uh, line. That's the line that actually appears right here. You'll notice it's getting more bold as I adjust that. So you do have some options there. I'm going to turn it off, though. I think it makes sense to keep it off for this one. All right, you can also add or turn on or off a border around the entire box that we have here. And then as we go a little bit further up, here's some interesting settings underneath general. Underneath the general settings, you have things like where you can adjust the orientation. So right now it's showing vertically. Uh, meaning that it's kind of top down. Uh, you can also change it to horizontal if you'd like. And then what that means is as you stretch this out, it'll actually adjust. And uh, I would have to adjust the columns here to make it have more columns. But when I do that, you'll notice that it goes horizontally here instead of vertically. If I flip that back to vertically and make that two columns, notice how it changes there and flips back to more of a vertical orientation here. So I'm going to make that two columns like we did here. I'm going to put it on the left-hand side. You can see I have exactly eight numbers. So that's kind of a good layout right there as we see it. Uh, but that's a good way to be able to see uh, if you look at it, depending on what type of images you have, depending on how you want to show it. Very interesting placement that you can do here with the orientation. You can also show what does it look like when things are disabled. So let me do what I did earlier. Let me select Google here again. And when I have Google selected, you can see there's several of these values that are disabled, meaning that they're not selected. You have a choice of how those disabled values actually appear here inside the graph or inside the chiclet slicer. So if I wanted to, I could actually make it so that whenever someone selects an item in, like, say, for example, the bar chart, it filters down the list or that it reorders the list. And that's what you'll see under the general section here where you see show disabled. Right now it says in place. That just basically means highlight the ones that are selected and gray out the ones that aren't selected. You could also change it to put uh, bottom, which means all the disabled ones are going to be forced to the bottom, like you see here. Okay, and depending on your orientation, vertical or horizontal, it'll uh, show those are the first two left to right or the first two top down. You can also do this. You can hide them. So if you wanted to just outright filter the ones out that don't apply, you can hit hide, and it filters out all the other ones that don't apply here. And then anytime you select any of the values here, you'll notice that it filters down based on that selection. And you can always unfilter to see every value that you have here. So that's some of the things that you have in here. I'm going to flip that back to the default again, just so that you can see what it looked like by default, which was to in place filter those. So that way, when I select Google, it just filters them out like that. And again, you can adjust the colors. You have a lot of flexibility with how you modify and customize the colors and the way this looks. But it's a very nice visual. It allows you to do quite a bit when it comes to being able to show images and how you orient the filter. It's a very nice way of doing it. Some people are even using this as a way to replicate some of the things you would do in the previous old Excel version of PowerView, where you would have tiles going across the top and you could select a tile. That's another great use of the Chiclet Slicer as well. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I look forward to the next one that we'll do together as well.